All right, so we're going to talk about common fungicides. So my question to you is going to be this. Why do we need fungicides? Fungicides are very important uh, to primarily prevent diseases. Okay. Uh, with uh, insects, you can see an insect problem and you can spray it with insecticides right. and kill the insect. With a fungal disease, leaf spot diseases, especially things like that, uh, you want to pre try to prevent those from occurring. And uh, if you already have the spots on the leaf, <laughs> There is no fungicide on the market that will take those spots off. That's good. But yeah. you can pre hopefully prevent it from spreading. All right, so let's talk about some of the different common fungicides. Uh, one of the most common ones is chlorothalonil. Yeah, yeah. And, and let yeah. me, at this point, let me, let me say the trade name really is not as important as, as the common name. Yeah. The common name is chlorothalonil. It is probably sold under several different trade names. Okay. Uh, and what do you mean by trade names? A trade name, I'm going to give you an example. Okay. Daconil, Daconil is a, a right. trade name That's for, right. for chlorothalonil, but chlorothalonil is in a lot of fungicides right. because the patent has run out on most of these fungicides. Most of these oh, fungicides yeah. have been around quite a while. Right. And, uh, uh, but chlorothalonil and mancozeb yeah. are two very, very common fungicides that you will often see recommended for vegetable diseases. Uh, tomato blight, early blight, uh, some of the leaf spot and, and rust and things like that mm -hmm. that, that uh, uh, affect vegetables. Uh, captan yeah. is probably the most widely recommended fungicide for fruit trees. Brown rot on peaches, uh, black rot on apples. Uh, uh, fly speck, uh, yeah. a lot of the common diseases on, on apples, uh, captan is uh, the most common ingredient in home orchard sprays. Sulfur mm -hmm. is a biological uh, fungicide that uh, is also uh, commonly recommended for fruits, a lot of the fruit diseases, okay. and I'm talking about the leaf spots, uh, brown rot, and uh, uh, even black rot on grapes oh, and okay. things like that. that. Okay. Uh, uh, when you get into the roses and some of the ornamentals, uh, mycobutanil, yeah. <laughs> propiconazole, tebuconazole, some of the, they're, these are systemic type. Okay. And, and do explain what systemic means. Systemic means that it is absorbed somewhat by the plant. Okay. Uh, there are locally systemic fungicides that are absorbed by the leaf and it may move a little bit into the leaf. Right. There's some that are, are a little bit more systemic that are absorbed into the leaf and may go right to the end of a shoot or the end right. of a, a growing point right. uh, a little bit. And then there are some newer the fungicides that are out there that are totally systemic and they'll move throughout the plant right. all the way to the roots. Uh -huh. And those, mm -hmm. are, those are some of the brand new ones. Right. And uh, they, uh, they will give you about another week's control from seven to 21 days control if rain doesn't wash them off. The contact fungicides are seven to 14 days. Mm, uh, so you get an extra week if you go with some of the systemics. Yeah, right. And some of the systemics have a little bit of kickback activity, a little bit of curative problem. You can have an infection that is less than 72 hours, and if that fungicide is absorbed into the tissue, it can, it can actually help control that disease. How about so the, that's, oh, and, and that's, some of the ornamentals, uh, you're really into aesthetics. Yeah. You want things to really look good. And that's why most of the time you see one of the systemics okay. uh, uh, rec recommended for, for those kind of uh, problems. Right. Uh, copper is another fungicide, uh, copper sulfate. That will also has some bacterial activity. Mm -hmm. In the pecan business, copper fungicides are very, very common to control yeah. the diseases on pecan trees. Some of the newer ones, and these are commonly used in turf grass, strobilarins, zoxystrobin, okay. oh, yeah. pyroclostrobin, yeah. those type of fungicides, they'll control brown spot, yeah, brown patch, patch and dollar yeah, spot in yeah. turf grass, yeah. and uh, they are also uh, systemic, and, right. and uh, that's, the golf course is very yeah, important yeah. to you know, yeah. keep those diseases in, in your home lawn also. Right. That's right. Those are the most common ones. Uh, some of the botanicals that are out there for folks that are organically minded, yeah. sulfur is, is one yeah, of those right. that I've already mentioned, but neem has some yeah. fungicidal activities. Uh, clove and rosemary oils yeah. do too. There's a biological out there. We're all, we're all familiar with Bacillus thuringiensis, mm -hmm. which we, controls caterpillars, right. but there's a Bacillus subtilis <laughs> that uh, well, has I some antifungal activity. Really? So, Never uh, heard of that. Uh, okay. yeah, it sure is. Oh, wow. And that's, that's pretty much it 
on uh, but the most common fungicides that are out there. I know that in the agricultural, on the agricultural end, new ones come out all the time. Okay. And it's hard to keep up with them. And, and, and there are some of the systemics that, you know, at one time, when you said systemic activity with a, a fungicide, you'd kind of yeah. say, oh, I don't know about that. So if you're a homeowner, how do you determine which fungicides you need to use? The label. Okay. Read the label. A lot of these fungicides will control powdery mildew, downy yeah. mildew, leaf spots, rust, and things like that. And you'll see that on a lot of the fungicide labels. It's probably a good idea to uh, use more than one class mm -hmm. of fungicide okay. because fungici fungal diseases can build up a resistance mm -hmm. to fungicides if you use the same fungicide yeah. all the time. Right. Uh, that's why, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and there are fungicides out there that have more than one uh, uh, chemical in them. There are, there are actually two fungicides together. Mm. That also combats resistance. They're a little bit more expensive, but they'll yeah. control more diseases and, and right. it combats the resistance thing. But uh, read the label. Yeah. Uh, Try to identify the disease that you have. Yes. Or I know on my fruit trees what kind of diseases that I'm okay. going to get. And so I make sure that I use a uh, fungicide that will prevent those diseases right. from occurring. The thing about fungicides is you can spray during bloom. And sometimes it's necessary to spray when the plants are blooming because okay. there are fungal organisms that can right. get into the blooms. And actually, if you take the bloom out, You've lost your fruit, yes, yes, and yes, good and, point. and and the fungicides yes. have no insecticidal activity, so they will not uh, yeah. hurt the honeybees, uh, uh, pollinating insects. Uh, but know what disease that you are trying to take care of. I think of, that's the key, really. And and right. then you make sure that the fungicide you choose has that disease on the label. Right. Another question. So is it best to use a liquid fungicide? You know. I'm not aware of, there are some powder There's fungicides. Some powder. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it makes any difference. Okay. I know Benlate, uh, Benamil yeah. used to uh -huh. be a, a powdered fungicide. Sure I, I, but I, you know, with the work that I do, uh, have done in the past, uh, almost all of the fungicides I've used have been liquid. liquid. Yeah. Personally, liquids are easier to get into solution, yeah. uh, but the powder also are pretty easy to get into solution simply by slurrying them, yeah. pouring them from one container to another, make sure that they're really in solution yeah. real good and really, you know, liquefied before you put them in your spray tank. Okay. That's very important. And then continue, you know, the, the, well, any of them, say, yeah. you know, shake, yeah. put, shake yeah. the tanks up, keep them agitated. Even the liquid liquid ones will fall oh. out okay. if you don't do a really good job of keeping, keeping uh, the, the tanks agitated. Okay. Yeah, so the key is read and follow the label. Uh, read and follow sure. the label. Right. Uh, Especially, uh, one thing you need to be aware of is uh, most of these fungicides have withdrawal periods before harvest, so make sure that you uh, stop spraying well before the harvest. All right, well thank you Mr. D. We appreciate that good information. All right.